Good morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. Hello to those members that haven't been with us before. And today, owing to last night, we're going to do a little bit of a change to what we had done. So, I've grabbed a load of offcuts. My uh, Royal Quill USB from Paige Evans. And we're going to be using some of the designs that are inbuilt in your Scan and Cut SDX. Now, if you're working on a CM, what you can do is just create a plain basic envelope template and then take a circle from M, or we'll become clear when we start to see it on screen. So, first of all, let's do hellos. Okay, so, yeah, uh, Jen, Deb, Christina, Yvonne, Beatrice, uh, Sarah, Sandra, good morning. Hello, hello, hello. And all viewers who've joined us. And um, Josie, good morning. So if anybody wonders why I keep looking that way, that way is the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so I do try to keep an eye on comments as well, just in case anyone misses any. But <laughs> uh, morning, Carol. Uh, morning, Sally Ann. Morning, Carol. No. Is Carol, 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 Carol. Is Carol. There's Carol, Carol. Carol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Lily. Morning, Lily. And Valerie, good morning. Did we say hello to Sally Ann? I did. That's okay. Okay. So, do you want to put it onto close scan this week? Close scan. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so, at the moment, my SEX has an update item, but we're going to save that for the weekend for our intro course so that we can show how to update. So, in case anybody's wondering where I haven't installed it yet, it's not that I'm not going to. It's just that we're saving it for the course. Uh, morning, Jeremy, and uh, welcome to your first live. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Pop them up in the uh, questions. Uh, morning, Janet, as well. Uh, and to anybody who's new, don't be afraid to ask questions. We do answer as much as we can. It doesn't have to be about what we're doing or if yep. it's just craft related. We do our best to answer as we go along. And morning, Linda and Janet. Okay. I'm sorry, Sally, yes, I forgot to stop you there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go to pattern and we're going to use our down arrow to get to our second screen. No, we're not, not yet. I'm impeding too soon. Go to the design one first, then do that. Good start. <laughs> Wouldn't say the nerves are kicking in today or anything. <laughs> okay, so this one just here, double layer six. Is the one that we're going to be using today. So as I said, if you're working on a CM, if you just get a basic envelope template, so um trying to think if there's one on the actual machine, but if not, you can get one from the template maker and do it that way. And if you need help doing that, Ian did a video before Christmas on template maker. And then you can pop a circle in to get the aperture. Jen's asking which course. So oh uh, Shane from Australia, 10 pm here. Oh, thank you, Shane. Loves our life anyway. Hey! It's good to be back. It is. Um, the courses, um, we're doing some courses in January again. So, in January, um, next this weekend coming up, we have courses on setting up and using the SDX um, CM. Uh, the following weekend, we have the intro courses to Canvas and Desktop and Online. And then we also have the following week, we have one on Affinity. Uh, Affinity Designer. And then the following weekend, we also have Scale and Corral Draw. Yeah, Scale and Corral Draw. So well, they're Col all of Depending on how you want to pronounce it. Okay. So, <laughs> Coral. <laughs> Corral Draw. Um, <laughs> they're all, what we're doing, they're all available from our Buy Me a Coffee Extras page. So if anybody's interested in those who isn't already booked on, you can book on. Okay, <laughs> so the reason we're doing it this way, Bank, is that it's much easier to create your envelope first and then size your card to fit your envelope than it is to do it the other way around. So let's start off with our envelope. So the size relates to the total size of that shape. So don't be thinking that it relates to this size, which is why it's easier to do your envelope first. So I'm going to first of all decide which bit of the card I'm going to put the tap in. And I think I'm going to go for some nice patterned card. 
And let me just grab a ruler very quickly and we'll measure the carbon tip we have in the, with the size that it wants to come out. So it's just over eight inches. Hey, I'll send you, I'll just put a link up with links to our website and our blog. Okay. Yeah, I'll drop you in. I'll, I'll put them up in here as well, Jim. Um, so you can have a look at the climate coffee link. So, as I already have a USB on my machine, I'm just taking it off and I'm going to pop on the page Evans one. So, when we're working with USBs in our machine, it's a good idea to have a little extension lead. So, if you're wondering why my hand's here for the USB, I have it literally strapped to the top of my machine so I can just easily change over USBs. Okay, so now if we go to add, we can go to retrieve data and to USB. And we're going to go to SPG. And I'm going to go down to Word. And let's go for. I was going to go for smiles, so I think it's Okay, so our floor pool shapes are designed for drawing and not necessarily for cutting. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one copy of that that we can draw, and then I'm going to offset it so that I have it a shape that I can cut easily. And I'm going to weld it to this aperture in our envelope. Now, if you're working on a CM and you've got a basic envelope template and a circle that you're putting on your machine, weld isn't necessarily going to work for you. But we'll show you a few tricks with Canvas later this week so that you can do this that way. So, if we go into Edit, Object Edit, and Offset. Then you can choose your offset distance. You can see already it's in a little preview. And if you go into the negative, it's going to take that offset inside. And in the positive, it's going to go outside. So with a guide of about that much, you can see that you've got a little bit of a border, but you're not losing too much detail. So you can go OK. So we now have. Two shapes. We have the shape that we brought in of our USB, and we have our offset shape. So I'm going to bring that back to that. Now, it is not quite big enough. We're going to want to edit both of these at the same time. So this is where we're going to use our multi select so that we can have both things selected. And we can group them and then edit them and then ungroup them. So if we go back into object edit, we're going to group, move it up to our aperture. And it doesn't matter, they're not perfectly aligned at this point. We're going to go to resize and take a little bit bigger. Hi Tracy, not sure what's going on with the notification. It came through quite quick on this. Hours today, but don't know what's going on there. Since then, you just got an FTP. That's not good, is it? Mm. So, I'm going to rotate this just because I want it to put an angle on an envelope. And at this point, you need to decide which way around your proper your envelope's going to work. So, I think, yeah, I'm going to take it that way instead. So, that we've got room to still write. Address details if we need to, and we can still see our smile. Just going to ungroup those for a minute, and then we can go into 
move and align. Looking at the line are two centers, so they should be back in sync. Now, if we use these two arrows here, we can cycle through our shapes. So you want to make sure you go for the bigger one. So we're doing a decorative envelope today, and then we're going to do the card to fit in it tomorrow. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Next, I want to just double check if I go too far that I actually overlap these edges. And it looks like I'm maybe slightly too small, so I'm going to go slightly bigger. Just so I can cover this area here, this area here. And we're already overlapping down here. And we could do with tacking a little bit for the scheme. So again, I'm going to go into multi select. Use the window, it's going to select our two threads there. Object edit, group, then resize. So it won't let you resize without doing that group function. So whether it's grayed out, it's a little bit of a prompt to help you out. So I'm going to zoom back in. We can see it's overlapping here, here, here. And going down here. So it can get OK. OK. Morning, Delcy. Uh, I might do a quick live later this afternoon, just where you can check your settings and notifications to make sure you do get notifications. Yeah, I, d I did see about you doing that this morning, didn't I? And it went out in my head. Yeah, little things just present. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm going to find my kind of one group your words because now we want to weld that back piece to our envelope. So we need to ungroup and click off. Okay, make sure you've got the right one selected, so the bigger one of the two. Go to multi select and we're just going to tap our envelope. And get OK. Object edit. Wild. <laughs> oh dear. You gotta love it sometimes, don't you? It's not gonna do it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's just one of those spaces, isn't it? Yeah, she's off to make a couple. She's made a couple of those, carrying over to the book. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's interesting. It's done that. That's welded bits, but not all of it. It is, instead of welding it, it's divided it. That is weird. Not what we intending to do. Let's get rid of that. So, it obviously takes exception to work. Now, I'm just going to check that it will actually well be just the basic shape. That way we're eliminating that it's the envelope that's at fault. I'm just going to bring in a small square. And I'm just going to overlap it. It doesn't matter where. Because I can always bring that envelope back in. So if we go to edit, select all. Object edit and weld. It's the envelope causing the issue. Naughty envelope. Okay. Now, Ian, do you fancy do it, doing a little bit in canvas for me? If I do all the pieces for you. Uh, that could be interesting. Okay. I'll give it a go. I'll do all the pieces and send it to you. So if we go to add, and we can bring our word back in. 
see today. Do you want me to write any text for you? No. I'm doing the text. I'll even do you the offset. <laughs> so, yes, because I had to do the Big Sur update, so my text doesn't work anymore. But the computer was not going to let me get away with it, was it, so? I'm just going to resize that, twist it round, then do the offset. Okay, let's make that a bit bigger. Rotate and go in that way. Okay. Offset. Okay. So at the moment, all those are separate pieces. So we'll go OK. OK again. And we'll go to save. And at this point, it gives you the option of saving it to the machine, USB or send it to the cloud. So if we send it to the cloud, and it says there's a group pattern on that, and once you save, you can't ungroup it. Just go at OK. OK. So that has gone up to the cloud, and it's over to you, Ian. Yeah. Hopefully, you can all see my screen. Of course, I see the chat at the side there, hopefully, so I haven't lost all that. So I'm going to the file, and I'm going to import from the printing machine and the XCM file. So hopefully, ta da! Ta -da. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> As if I'm magic. <laughs> There we have a file. What would you like me to do with this one? So you're going to nudge that smile so it's overlapping the circle and the back offset, so the biggest offset, is going to be while you set in place. And that's why you couldn't do it. <laughs> so rather than grouping it, it needs to actually subtract those little pieces from the big pieces. They just work on the text first, or the two top groups. Putting those two first. Yeah. Let's sort those out. Yeah. So first we'll ungroup the top one and then do that. Good. So you can hide the others first. Yeah, let's treat up some of the other Yeah, so you can see the wood for the trees. Let's turn that on. That's that one. That's the inside. Okay. So let's leave that one. So we're going to ungroup that with uh, right click and ungroup. And then we're going to get it all selected. We are going to go to edit and subtract. Mm -hmm. Which makes that all one sheet, hopefully. Yep. That's why it's not muted. Yep. Then you see that for the next so group. So we'll leave that one as that. So then we go to this one. Turn that one off. Turn that one on. So again, we can see we've got all these bits. Um, maybe the same bouncy as him, which is good. So again, we go right click and group. And then with them all selected, we're going to go to edit and subtract. Again, that should hopefully make that all one sheet. Yeah. And they're in the right order now. Yeah. So finding your envelope. Yeah, now I can turn on that one. Are you happy with placement? Um, you probably wouldn't enlarge it slightly, but you're going to want to sort about your envelope first because the envelope has the same issue. If you drop it down. What have they done to this? They've created all the, all the score lines as little dashes. So the first thing you can do is take all of those out. So it's basically everything from there down. They're individual. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch up with Yeah. Hello, 
<laughs> okay. That's making it think. There we go. Hey, there we go. Back up with all those little dotty lines. Do you want me to put them back in properly? Or? Nope. No, you haven't. You don't need it. I don't need it. I know you're good, but thank you. You're just going to use a ruler and a scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> so the next issue that you have at the moment with that shape is it hasn't had its subtraction pin properly. Well, don't make it the circle so, through. Yeah, so you're going to have to move the circle up above the big shape. Undo. Yeah, so undo it. Undo. And then take this one. Uh, yeah, you do a selection. There we go. Move it underneath that one. Not always. Um, the only reason I had to delete all those ones is they put them in each as, as an individual little dash, so I had to select all of them. Normally, when you put in a dash line, you can put in uh, just a, a continuous path. A continuous path, and then do the. Well, I'll show you in a second on a path and show you how you could do it through Canvas. Um, let me just track this for a moment. So this is going right. There we go. That's punch that through. So now we can see in our layers we've got circle with a hole. We have our um, text that you're going to set to draw. You're not draw, do you? Yes. Yeah. So uh, As you're there. As I'm <laughs> Yeah. And then you've got your outline which is going to be underneath. Yeah. Okay. It does just it's good that it didn't work. Because <laughs> <laughs> now we know. So yeah. if you want to put in a um, a dashed line, we can use what's known as a path tool, which is this one here, or you can press P. And you can see there it lights up the little corner there, which is your um, that node on that corner. So we can select the one side there, and we can ping it across and click once. And if you want to do the entire square, which we could do because it's the square that we're going to set to dash, we can go around the four corners. Make the shape, and then up here. Uh, which would you use third one, Dan? Yeah. Take that to dash, and then you put your dash line back in. And then all you've got to delete then is that square if you want to take out the dash lines. It does depend very much on how it's been designed. Um, if you design it yourself and wanted to do it that way, that's the easy way. If it comes in, it's got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of single lines. Then yes. Take them out. Take them back. back. Put them back in because. When your machine will look for it, because rather than thinking, oh, I've, I've got, got 120, yeah. how many different dash lines it thinks I've got four lines to do. So, in that sense, it's much easier for you. Um, so, it will be easier. Do you want those left in now, or do you want to take them back out? Do you want them or not? Um, no, I'll take them out. Take them out. Okay, so Matt doesn't need them, so we'll take them out. But that's how you can do them. Um, what else do you want me to weld? Do you want me to weld the outline to the... Yeah. I need to move the outline down. It, it doesn't matter. You could do a, a hand select if you want to do, so you get the mouse key. Yeah, but... It, yeah, it but doesn't matter which way. way. Yeah. So, I'm going to select these two. Is it in the right place for you? As much as you can see, yeah. Okay. And subtract again. No, you're going to weld. Weld, so we're going to have these two. There we go. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. So if I zoom that in just a little bit. So you can see what's going on. So there you can see now it's welded through the, if I turn off the text for a second. So you can see a bit clearer. There you go. You can see a bit clearer now that it's actually welded our shape together. So we've now got somewhere to put our smile once we've uh, written it. Are you going to foil it now? <laughs> I wasn't going to foil it, no, I was going to just draw it for today. But, uh, yeah. So now that we've done all that, we can send that back to the machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can now go up to the file. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm just doing that layer back on, otherwise I'm not going to get that bit. Um, it's important for it to notice that if you have a layer turned off and you then send something to the vegetable, it only sends what is visible on the screen. So if you've got a layer turned off, it won't send it. So we have the, F the SDX setup for a wireless connection, so you can transfer it over the internet. Press OK. And that's back with you. OK. Uh, close again? Yes, please. There you go, that's back with the fetch. Okay, so that's what we've just sent to me, so now we can go home and delete it all off. We're going to go to retrieve data and from the cloud. And that's the file that Ian's done. And the easy way to tell is that if you look at our text view, it has a blue line which indicates that that's, that line there is going to draw rather than cut. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. So, brand new map. Yay! And I'm going to. Yes, yep, so we're using an artistics map. And I'm just going to apply my card in. Now, because this definitely has a right way up. I've stuck my card on the right way up. Rather than trying to think, oh, I'll, I'll do it to this corner and stick it up there. So that way, when I move everything, I can just move it and just concentrate on placement rather than having to rotate my design to make it look like paper. So with map loaded, we can do a background scan. And that's going to feed through your machine and back again. So we have to increase volume every single section not Um hopefully we're gonna fix that for you uh, later on today. Oh. Is it the volume or in this call the is anybody else having issues hearing us okay or uh, is it a bit quiet? You can let us know. Uh, it may just be a computer setting your end that you just need to turn it up. Maybe I think we've got everything set as high as it will go on ours at the moment for reception. Yeah, until yes. later when we get a different mic. So. Yes, somebody said perfect. It's all fine for the volume wise. Okay. I'm going to select everything, go OK, Object Edit and Group because we want to keep that in the same position. Then we can drag that down so that we can make the most of our card. Yeah, that's what I wanted to check just to make sure because we, we had problems last year with our mic being an issue with sound. Um, um, it wasn't picking up very well. That's why I just wanted to check that uh, it sounds good for everybody else. Um, how can we increase the volume for hearing? Um, are you on a PC or a Mac, Marion? You can let me know. Um, and I can give you some tips to what you might be able to do to decompress it to put your volume up or where to find it. Okay. So with that moved down, we can go OK. Now we've got a few little fiddly pieces in our Design due to welding that text. So, you mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, go to post code for that. Um, I'll have a look at that, Jen, in a moment, just moving the camera a little bit over because it's where you had it setting up, it wasn't the central desk, it was it over one side? Oh, uh, it's, it's only because you're getting yeah, it yeah. in the, the machine. But they have to make it centralized here, isn't it? So, perfect. yeah. But we'll change the camera for now. Yeah, that's what we can do. Put it more that way. There we go. Right. 
So with that move, I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to go to my vinyl blade, just because I've got a few little tiny pieces. And I'm going to pop that in. OK, so I was going to say, shall I bring it down here? Because I can, and across it. There we go. Yeah, I can't get the angle quite that way, but it's close enough. Yeah. Excuse the camera for standing straight now for a moment because Yeah. So I'll try my best to talk a little bit all below it. Because I think slap hanging a little bit. Ah, alright, okay. That's the one there. There we go. So as you can see, as I was saying, the vinyl also blades it's the blue top one. So I'm going to cut. Then we can go into the settings. And my cut pressure is still on minus five, so I'll have to use the vinyl blade last time. So, although um, when you first open your DX app, it will be set to auto, you may find that as you start to work more and more with designs, you find what suits your style. So, I do a lot of detail work, so my standard auto blade tends to be at minus nine pressure, and my vinyl is at minus five. Okay, and we can let that go. You look like a DJ. Yep, I'd be quite happy doing that. <laughs> That's late, like, because you're just getting a notification now. It's <laughs> been on for a while, but it's just popped up. Like. It's weird. Yeah. There we go. What? Thirty-three minutes. Now. <laughs> What's it doing? It's doing this one, isn't it? We think it go round the outside first, don't we? <laughs> there we go. No, it doesn't have any other border, does it? Okay, so we've got that done. I'm going to take out my blade, put its cap back on. So with the standard auto blade, I don't tend to worry about the cap too much because it's a much tougher blade, but the vinyl blade, you definitely want to put the cap on it. Okay, so what pen should we go for today? Hmm. We've got lots of choice now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for... Oh, you want to go paint pen, do we? Mm. What look are you going for? Uh, bold. Dark. Uh, bold and dark. Uh, sharp. Mm, I, mm. I might, yeah. Shall we? Means my hand just happened to land on a, a sharp box. It's too sharp. Even if it has, I might have to make them out. So let's go for think about the colours that I've got already on. Not that one. Not that one, it's going to throw itself on the floor. Um, let's go for. Purple? Yeah, why not? Why not? You want to go for it? Yeah. Get that out for the next one. Yeah. 
Take your cap off your sharpie pen and load it into your sharpie holder and you're going to screw the cap back on. So if you're not familiar with this particular holder, it's by 3D Fingerprints. And if you enter our competition, you can stand a chance to win one. So I'm just going to pop that in there. We haven't, have we? So we're going to go, okay. Back to our please select, draw, and at the moment it's just going to draw that outline. So, should we not just do the outline? Yeah. I was going to fill it, but no, I'll just do the outline because it's my favorite. Fill it in curls your hair because it looks nice. <laughs> no, it's just washed and uh, it was put in the plaited last night yeah. when it was wet. So, it is curly, yeah. very curly. <laughs> And Carl is a genius, yes, he very much is, um, and he very kindly supplies us with prizes for our competition. Uh, so if you do enter any of our competitions when we launch them, um, we have uh, we have some 3D pen holders, and we also have the um, foil quill holders that we give away as prizes for people who win our competitions, which are supplied by Carl. Okay, so when you go to start with the Sharpie Pen holder, it's going to come up with this little notice saying attach appropriate holder. You're just going to go OK and press start again and it will ignore that it's even thrown up an error message. <laughs> Feels weird. <real. laughs> Curly hair. Yeah. I actually got the hairspray for some reason, and I don't think you should do hairspray now. So while that's doing that, I'm just going to take the USB back out because we've sent it to the machine anyway. We don't; it's not referencing it. So there's our smile that's drawn with our sharpie pen, and if you wanted to put it with a different pen, you could do as well. So with your sharpies, you want to get the caps back on as soon as possible, as they are alcohol based. So. They do like to dry up. Yes, Josie, the um, pen holder that Carl makes. Um, I will model. <laughs> is specifically designed for the fat sharpies. Yeah. Um, it doesn't fit the fine line ones, but it is specifically designed for the fatter ones with the bulk tips. So you can put them into your either a, a CM or a DX. Using this pen holder, and you can use them to draw, colouring, and use them lots. So, yes, they are fantastic. I think the. It's around £13, I think. £13, £15 it was. I don't know if he's changed his price, but I think he's lowered them a little bit. Yeah. And um, if you want to buy individually or you can enter a run at our competition when we launch it, and it might be you that wins our prize. So. Just for today, that being the end, so to go in, I'm just going to take this off on that. There isn't very much left on that, is there? <laughs> so, uh, that'll probably be another one that clears the offset to a bit more. So, I'm using Metaspatula because it's easier to get underneath delicate items or bits there. 
especially when you start to get to your smile just here you're going to want to get your spatula underneath to help tease it off the mat like so so just take your time So if any of you just look at that, it lost the dot off the eye, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. We can put a little gem in there. And make our way a little round in there. Sure. Okay. So with that cut, I think I may just make that and, uh, we can do a little bit of decorating that tomorrow. Just thinking about time. So let's move these off cuts just to one side for a moment. And we're going to unload our mat. Now I'm doing that blind. <laughs> That's, good. That's okay because you, you were um, typing, so I didn't want to disturb. That's not far off, it's a, it's a little bit. Okay. There we go. So, little trick for your backing paper or your ice stick mat. And usually I get into demonstrating to it, especially when it's brand new. So just roll your back of the paper and line it up at the top. Uh, it's in my pen holder. Yeah, I mean, do you need to show in a second if you've got a pen holder? The, the you universal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just get rid of the air bubbles. Okay. The universal. There we go. Grab a guide. Or even grab the clean guide as well. <laughs> Especially the one I painted into the pen. There we go. So that's the universal. It has a little screw pack just here, and there's that line stone that's in between these teeth and at the side here. And that can hold a lot of pens. When people ask me which pens do I recommend, I'm, I am sport for choice. So the standard tripods will fit in this, even with their triangular barrel. Um, that's why I haven't tried yet. I haven't tried an Inconic in it yet. Yes, you only had them for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing with them yesterday as well. Yeah. Do you want to grab one for me, though? No, yes. No? Okay. <laughs> Told me. <laughs> so, if you have something like the Stabilo Fine Miners, those will fit in. So, it's not a case of it's just round barrel pens that will fit in. You've got Lots and lots and lots of pens. I'll send you a link for that one as well, Julian. Again, these are what we give away with our, um, our prizes. But you will only get them in the colours we have them. Um, From us. <laughs> yeah, because they don't. Um, They're limited edition. They are limited edition. We need to start with them. I'm just going to see if I've got a pen that I can just grab to fit it in. Let's try one of those because I haven't tried one of those in it. So when you're going to put your pen in, you're going to want to put your guide on the bottom and then you're going to slide your uncapped pen through the top and you want to make sure that your nib goes through the centre ink there. You're then going to push it down so that your nib touches the bottom of your guide and sometimes it takes a little bit of encouragement to do that and then you're going to tighten your screw thread 
until you feel it voluntarily grip that pen. Then if you give it a little tug there, you can make sure that everything's holding. And then take your guide off. We have two lines on the holder, and those go to the back. Then you slot that in the machine and carry on with more. There you go. So the pen I use just as a pigment like one to the end, which is a plastic nib. But there are so many pens that you can put in it. You can put calligraphy pens in it, we've got pencils in it. We even put some coloured pencils in it, which is interesting. And we have the uh, like Zentangle ones, don't we? Yeah. On the <laughs> So the, the fingers, you can't, no. you can't get my sensation anymore, which is very normal, because they were nice. Right. There we go. Squeeze them back yes, in there. The holder is brilliant. It's highly recommended. We can't recommend Carl enough. It's sort of the major issue that Rilla came out with because they're pen holder that originally one the plastic at the top is horrible for people who have dexterity problems. Uh, on occasion you need it. Yeah, including a uh, Hindu without dexterity problems. The clip on the top of the brother ones is awful. Awful design. Um, and at least the, the one that Carla created is easy to use. Um, it's brilliant. So we can't recommend it enough. So with your mat covered up, okay. we're going to move on to our scoring. Now I'm really arranging this is holding. Yeah, the brother one's so hard to use. Yeah, absolutely it goes. You couldn't agree more. Okay. So we do our best to be unbiased, but if we find something we like, we do uh, recommend them strongly. Yes. Same with the artistic maps. We love the artistic maps. What have you recommend those? Those brother. The tack on them is so much better. So I'm just going to line these up. Punctuation is our last. A lot longer. Don't they? Yes. The cleaning is easier to turn the glue and holes to. I'm just line this up point to point. Just why I don't tend to do score lines for something that is pretty straightforward. If you work in a more complex 3D, yes, then you can put the score lines in and it makes life a little easier. So then we're going to go and fold all of these in. And we're just going to do it from the fingers to start with. And then I'll go back and press all these in the more burn folder into my cutting mat. Okay. So the burn folder I'm using is a Teflon one. Let's move you back this way. Okay. So with the envelope, you're just going to apply this. Uh, Here's two side strips first. And let's go for that bit of red line of paint. Now, if you're not sure about where to apply your adhesive, if you're holding the long flap, you'll be able to see that it does leave a bit of gap down this edge. So you don't want to be putting your tape right up to your folded edge. So 
going to go in slightly. This is So we've had a big move around over Christmas, haven't we? Yeah, but we can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have every intention of doing a uh, studio tour for uh, YouTube. It's just waiting for me to have the time to film it and do voiceovers and that. There's also going to be some videos and Q and A things happening in the afternoons, isn't there? Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of wet glue. That's just going to help give me a little bit of wiggle room. I'm not just going to fold things first over. Good, good. So, if you're not already signed up to our YouTube channel, you can find us on YouTube at Anapress. There you can subscribe to all of our videos at the moment, now coming out to Facebook, YouTube, and also Twitch. No, the Universal Channel doesn't hold the shelf as well, they're two separate holders. So, you yeah. need to have um, both to be able to use the Sharpie pen. The Universal Pen Holder will hold the fine line Sharpies, but not the the fat one. So you need to have the, the two to be able to. Oh, I can move it back there. That's been blocked away. <laughs> there we go. So that's the first bit of our envelope done, and I think for today we'll leave it there. So tomorrow we will do the card to go inside as well as some finishing touches for our envelope. So take care for now. And I think Ian's going to do a watch party or something this afternoon, aren't we? I might just find some people to help you. <laughs> <laughs> and because we have a few videos on the way that you're, you're editing, aren't you? Really? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll be doing voiceovers. I won't be called in <laughs> getting to do the voiceovers. <laughs> so take care for now and we will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye.